Sand Cone Test and Overview. The objective of the sand cone test is to determine density or unit weight of an in situ soil. The ASTM standard for this test is D1556. There are a number of in situ density tests in use. The most common are the balloon test, the drive cylinder test, the nuclear density test, and the sand cone test. Of these methods, the sand cone test is the most accurate. It's especially useful to determine the density of compacted fills. The sand cone is almost always combined with a moisture content measurement. Using these two tests combined, we can compute both the total unit weight and the dry unit weight of the in situ soil. The sand cone test actually consists of four separate parts. Calibration of the sand cone, determination of the in situ total unit weight, measurement of the in situ moisture content, and computation of the in situ dry unit weight. Before covering each part of the test, let's have a quick overview of the test method. In order to compute the unit weight, we must measure both the volume and weight of a sample of the in situ soil. In the sand cone test, we do this by digging a small hole in the ground and collecting all the soil that comes out of the hole. We can then weigh this soil. To determine the volume, we fill the hole with a special calibrated sand. This sand is very uniform and dry. It will flow easily into the hole and fill it up. Most importantly, we will have already determined the unit weight of this sand. By weighing the sand container before and after we fill the hole, we will know the weight of calibrated sand in the hole. Since we know the unit weight of the sand, we can compute the volume of the hole as the weight of the sand filling the hole divided by the unit weight of the sand. Now we know both the weight of the soil removed from the hole and the volume of the hole. We compute the in situ unit weight as the weight of soil removed divided by the volume of the hole. If we have measured the moisture content of the in situ soil, we can also compute the dry unit weight as the total unit weight divided by the quantity 1 plus the moisture content divided by 100. Now that we have an overview of the test, let's look at the procedures. The first step is to calibrate the sand cone. The sand cone apparatus consists of a jar of sand, a cone assembly to transfer the sand from the jar to the hole, and a base plate which ensures a good connection between the cone and the soil. The cone assembly contains a valve that controls the flow of sand out of the jar and into the hole. Not all of the sand that flows out of the jar ends up in the hole. Once the hole is full, the sand continues to flow out of the jar and fills up the lower cone assembly, the part below the valve. When we weigh the sand cone before and after filling the hole, we're actually determining the weight of the sand filling the hole plus the weight of the sand filling the lower cone assembly. Obviously, we must subtract the weight of sand filling the lower cone assembly to determine the weight of the sand filling just the hole. So there are two steps in the calibration of the sand cone. First, we must determine the weight of sand filling the lower cone assembly, and second, we must determine the unit weight of the sand. The procedure to determine the weight of sand filling the lower cone assembly is very simple. Fill the jar with sand, attach the cone assembly, and weigh the jar in a cone assembly. Then place the base plate on a smooth surface, invert the sand cone and base plate making sure the cone fits in the rim of the base plate, open the valve, allow the sand to fill the cone, close the valve, reweigh the jar and cone assembly, and determine the weight of soil filling the cone. Repeat this test three times to obtain an average weight of sand filling the cone. To determine the unit weight of the sand, refill and reassemble the device. Obtain a proctor mold and remove its collar. Leave the base attached to the mold and determine the weight of the empty mold and base. Hold the sand cone assembly over the proctor mold and open the valve. Allow the sand to completely fill the mold. The objective is to fill the mold in the same way that you will fill the hole in the field. When the mold is filled, close the valve and remove the sand cone. Carefully strike off the top of the mold with a steel straight edge to obtain exactly 1 30th of a cubic foot of sand. Clean any sand off the outside of the mold and base, and then weigh the mold and base filled with sand. Empty the mold and repeat this process two more times. Using the average weight of sand filling the mold and the volume of the mold, you can compute the unit weight of the sand. It is important not to vibrate the sand cone during calibration or testing. The unit weight of the sand will change if it is vibrated during filling of the mold or filling of the hole in the field. We want the sand to be in a loose state, both in the lab and in the field. This is no time to shake, rattle, and roll. 
Now let's look at the field testing part of the procedures. Before going to the field, make sure you've assembled all the necessary equipment as shown. A complete list is in your lab manual. Fill the jar with number 30 silica sand, attach the cone assembly, and record the weight of the sand cone device filled with sand. In the field, locate a relatively undisturbed area. Using the shovel, remove the top few inches of loose soil and prepare a flat surface on which to conduct the test. Put the base plate on the surface and adjust as needed until the base plate fits flat with no gaps between the base plate and the soil. It is especially important to prepare a good surface. A well-prepared surface will eliminate needless errors in the test. With the base plate in place, begin digging the test hole through the hole in the plate. Be careful to recover all of the soil that comes out of the test hole and place it in a sample bag. You need to determine the weight of the soil that comes out of the hole, so don't lose any soil during this process. Continue digging the hole until its volume plus the volume of the cone is slightly less than the volume of the sand in the jar. Remember, the larger the hole, the more precise the test, as long as you don't run out of sand. Be sure the rim of the base plate is clean, and then place the sand cone on the base plate, ensuring that the cone fits properly in the rim. Open the valve and allow the sand to flow into the hole. This will take a few minutes. Do not shake or vibrate the cone when the sand is flowing. When the sand has stopped flowing, close the valve and remove the sand cone. Return to the lab and weigh the sand cone assembly and the bag of soil. After weighing the bag of soil, take a subsample of the soil and determine the moisture content using the normal procedures. You should now have determined the following quantities. Unit weight of the sand, weight of the sand filling the cone, weight of the soil removed from the hole, weight of sand filling the hole plus the cone. From these quantities, you can compute the total unit weight and the dry unit weight of the in-situ soil. This concludes this presentation.